So right now, ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for a rugby player that has made it to the All Blacks and also is from the beautiful island of Rotuma. See, because I'm not biased at all. Anyway, for those of you that don't know, the island of Rotuma is where Cheches come from. As you can tell by my face. Uh, <laughs> But for now, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. Please welcome Rocky Pan. Noaya, KC, hello, and hola. Before I get started, I just want to thank Dr. James Johnson and Yoko from the USB Faculty of Arts, Law, and Education, the New Zealand, New Zealand High Commissioner Jonathan Kerr, Halia Haddad, and Monica, also from the New Zealand High Commission, the Fiji Association of the Deaf. Deaf and anyone else who I missed for making this event possible. Uh, to the chief guest, Osiris Rebi, uh, to all the distinguished guests, staff, student, students, family and friends, thank you for having me here. I've only been in, the, in Fiji for a day and a half and it's been such an amazing experience so far. From driving from Nasori Airport to Suba and telling our taxi driver to turn around so we could pop into Lili Memorial School to see the students here. To walking around. <laughs> to, to walking around Albert Park yesterday and joining in a game of touch rugby there. To spending time at the New Zealand High Commissioner's official residence and meeting amazing people there. And I know some of them are here today. And even this morning, training with one of my mates from the All Black 7 squad at, at Albert Park and seeing Osea Colina Sao walk past with his family. Uh, to see a lot of the positive, positive, positive influence and impact occurring here is something that I love seeing and I love being a part of. Uh, that's a big reason why I'm here today. And I know for a fact that if we, keep, if we all keep pushing forward, uh, we'll be able to see more positive impact occur while we're still living here on this earth. I was quite fortunate enough to, uh, last year to have two conversations with Wayne Smith. So Wayne Smith's one of the great All Blacks coaches in 15s. Um, in the first conversation I had with him, he mentioned how he's a big believer in one club men, that the rugby club that you play for is the rugby club that you play for life, that the people that you meet and the connections that, that you make through your club can help you with life after rugby. That chap planted the seed in me uh, to move back to my old rugby club, the Ponsonby Rugby Club this year. And we're quite fortunate enough in the past weekend just gone that we won our club championship. And when I go back to New Zealand on Monday, I'll be starting my new role at the Ponsonby Rugby Club as the Rugby Development Officer. The second conversation I had with him, he mentioned that whenever we learn something, or whenever, that whenever we learn something or gain information to share it and give it away, it helps others, other, pe other people or groups of people become better, but it also forces us to become better as well. So I, so I intend to share some of what I've learned throughout the years uh, in this year's speech about Rugby for Change. Rugby for Change, when I first read the email, I automatically thought about breaking boundaries, defying expectations, and challenging the status quo. So I thought to myself, why not? So I said yes and came along. We have some great examples about, of people breaking boundaries and affecting change through sport throughout history. I'm thinking about rugby's part uh, during apartheid in South Africa, oh, it's been touched on um, earlier, when Nelson Mandela walked onto the field at the 1995 Rugby World Cup wearing a Springbok jersey, which was seen as a white sport, breaking boundaries. Or well, the great boxer Muhammad Ali fighting in the ring but also fly down outside of the ring for injustice and racial inequality, breaking boundaries. There were some examples of people who have made a huge impact on the world, but, but there's also recent examples on a smaller scale, such as Portia Woodman, the black friend sevens winger who took a stand for equality in sport, saying that money was put ahead of equality uh, for a woman's tournament to be played alongside the men's tournament at the Hamptons and Sevens this year. Next year, a men and women's tournament will be played in Hamilton at the same time, breaking boundaries. 
We also have some great examples in this room of people making, making huge impact in their world. Uh, the girls from the Fijiana 7s and 15s rugby team and the Indian the Indo-Fijian girls challenging the status quo of playing rugby and exercising here in Fiji. Um, tearing away culture, cultural boundaries at the same time. Breaking boundaries. And also to the Fijian, Bar Fiji Barbarian Steph rugby team receiving bronze at their recent uh, Sevens Rugby Championships. So I think that communication is a massive part of sport and something that I emphasize a lot with teams that I coach and play for, um, to, to go out there and play rugby and to achieve what you have achieved is, is truly inspirational, breaking boundaries. I remember something that I learned when I was studying my sport and rec uh, recreation degree, I learned about the self-determination theory regarding motivation. So this theory um, has a continuum and on one end of the continuum, you might find or you might see, meet someone who is amotivated. They don't want to do anything and they just, they just want to be themselves and just sit there and do nothing. And on the other side of the continuum, you get someone who is intrinsically motivated. That means they're doing something for the fun of it, the love of it, and it doesn't seem like a chore. Uh, there, there are other stages between the two continuums, but to help someone go from being amotivated to intrinsically motivated, uh, we use a car. So the C stands for competence. Uh, we teach them the skills required for the training or for the sport. The A stands for autonomy, to give them options uh, for them to choose. And the R stands for relatedness. Uh, we make people feel a part of a, a group environment or a part of a team. These are some things that I use when I coach teams or on my part of teams as a player or as a leader. Now about my, a little bit about my own personal journey. <coughs> it is said that if I'm able to see further than others, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And I'm quite fortunate enough to have stood on the shoulders of two giants in my life, my mother and my father. Dad was born in Bar, grew up in Tabua and then he moved to Suva to join the police. Uh, in the police, he, he played soccer for the police. Uh, he ended up making the Suva rep side and he ended up playing for Fiji as well. Uh, in the police, there's also CID. And I think he went to one South Pacific Games uh, for soccer as well. And when he finished playing soccer, he started playing squash and he ended up representing Fiji in squash as well. Uh, when he left uh, squash, he started working for the Fiji Times and he became head of, head of advertising for the Fiji Times. And mum, she started working quite early to provide for her family and she worked hard and um, she built a house um, up the road as well uh, for the family and she worked for the Fiji Times and that's where uh, Dan and her met. <laughs> in, in 1987, the first coup happened in Fiji. So they both thought it was best for them to leave Fiji with the clothes on their back and a suitcase each to start fresh in New Zealand. Uh, they opened up a dairy shop uh, just down the road from Eden Park, about four or five hundred metres down the road, and it's called Rocky Superette. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they had it there for 21 years. They bought it in 1990 and sold it in 2011. And, uh, I always remember them waking up early, working long hours from, from 6 a.m. to 9 or 10 p.m. at night, going to sleep and then doing it again the next day, seven days a week, and never complaining about it as well. I think that's where I got my work ethic from. Growing up in New Zealand, Dad was always into sports, and he'd always have sports on TV. In the summer, it'll be cricket, and in the winter, it'll be rugby. So I played both, both sports growing up making the Auckland Rep teams for both until I was 18 and had to choose one. I chose rugby. I remember when I was 15, I got invited to the Auckland Men's 7th training. I wasn't too sure if I'd go or not, but my old man would tell me to go, so I went. <laughs> Our coach at the time was Eric Rush, and I didn't realise that he'd, he'd spoken here a few years ago. Uh, Eric Rush is a legendary captain of the Zealand 7s. Uh, we also had uh, Tor Vainga, a Samoa rugby legend, 
and guys like Amasio Valance or Amasio Brahma or NIE, Mano Ashford, who have all worn, worn the fern before. Sherwin Stowers, he was here. He was young, but uh, he had already played for the New Zealand Sevens team by then. We also had a guy named DJ Forbes turn up that year. Um, I remember seeing him around training, and he made the Auckland team that year for nationals. He ended up making the New Zealand team after that nationals, and he was in that team for about another 10 years until he retired last year. I remember one advice Eric Rush gave us, he'd say, you get good at what you practice. If you practice doing nothing, you get good at doing nothing. Because if we practice doing a lot, we get good at doing a lot. So he said, all the best lawyers, all the best doctors, and all the best teachers get good at what they do because they practice. And that's something I always remember to this day. So like I said earlier, I was, I was in the Auckland Men's 7 squad as a 15 year old. But I really, wanted, I really wanted to play for the New Zealand side. Pretty funny because I couldn't even make the New Zealand team because I was too young. Or the Auckland team because I was too young at the time. It took me three years to make that team. And when you play for, for your provincial team at the national tournament, they name a New Zealand squad at the end of the tournament. And I remember when I first made this squad, I was sitting there and the names were read out and I missed out. So that, that was okay. I just went back to training and kept trying to get better and better and come back the next year. The next year, I went back again, they read the names of the New Zealand team again and I missed out again. That was okay. I went back to training and tried to get better and come back the next year. I had to do that for a few years. And then after seven years, I finally had, um, I finally heard my name read out <coughs> to wear the black jersey. It's good again. Yeah. 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 And in 2013, I was able to put on the black jersey in the Wellington Sevens, and in doing so, becoming the first player of Indian descent and of Asian descent and the first player for a two in descent to put on the black jersey of the New Zealand Sevens team. I always had a vision as well that when I made the team, that hopefully it would instill some belief into young Indian, young Ratuman, or anyone coming through that they were able to reach the highest level of their sport, or even their chosen field, because if I was able to, Anyone could. So I've been following a few young athletes' progress, and I've seen some Rotuman boys start to come through the rank, through the ranks in New Zealand. I even saw a young boy make the New Zealand Secondary Schools rugby team a couple of years ago. And last year, one girl got named in the New Zealand Secondary Schools wider netball squad. I'm now starting to see a few more Indian boys starting to participate in rugby back home in New Zealand. And I have no doubt that we'll see some coming through the ranks and representing in high levels in due time. Because I simply believe that all things are possible. Well, that's me for tonight. Thank you again and, um, for having me for this event. I can't wait to see it grow from strength to strength. And I thank you for everyone for turning out to listen to me share a little bit about my story. And hopefully you'll be able to take something away from it and to share it with others as well. Thank you.